Okay, welcome everybody to Miracle Monday. And we have the pleasure today of welcoming our brother John Monday. So we have Miracle Monday with Monday. Um, I attended John's presentations in both New York and Boston at the International Course of Miracle Conferences. And I really was struck by John's presentation as a very gentle, peaceful storyteller. That's, you know, John, you really struck me as a storyteller and, you know, someone who talks about his life experiences, like as a normal person in the world. Uh, you talked about your trials and your relationships, including your relationship with Helen Schuckman and Ken Wapnick. John is an author, lecturer, publisher of Miracles Magazine, and executive director of the All Faiths Cemetery in New York City. He taught courses in philosophy and religion from 1967 to 2008 at the New York uh, New School University and the State University of New York. The author of 10 books, his latest book is A Course in Mysticism and Miracles. His previous book, Living a Course in Miracles, has become his bestseller and now exists in eight languages. He was introduced to A Course in Miracles by its scribe, Dr. Helen Schuckman in 1975. Helen served as John's counselor till she became ill in 1980. He also appears on occasion as Dr. Baba John Mundane, a stand-up philosopher comedian. So welcome, John. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Yep. And the floor is yours. The floor is mine. Well, I'm going to sit down if you don't mind. Um, let me, that's joking. I might start off with lesson 158. If you've all got your books handy, you don't have to. But this is really one of the most interesting, uh, at the same time, kind of maybe mysterious passages in the course, because you're likely to read this and go, what? <laughs> I mean, what? And I think there, there's an answer to the, the what. So it's part of that answer that we're going to be looking at. Quickly. So I'll read it and make some comments maybe along the way. And then this is what we're going to get into. Our overall topic is power decision and the plan behind appearances. So beginning of paragraph three. The time is set already. It appears to be quite arbitrary, yet there is no step along the road that anyone takes but by chance. It has already been taken by him, although he has not yet embarked on it. For time but seems to go in one direction, but we undertake a journey that is over, yet it seems to have a future still unknown. So that's what I mean about a kind of baffling sort of, but very, very interesting passage. And I think that any and all of us can understand this at times. What I mean by at times is in a holy instant, as a part of a revelatory experience where you get a kind of aha or you, you see it or maybe in a meditation or just when you're really quiet and the mind is not doing a lot of chattering. It's kind of a really peaceful place, again, a holy instant in which the truth of this becomes real to us. And it's like Eckhart Tolle's now, it's very much entering into the, the now moment when it's easier to grasp because, you know, the Course says that we live in the past and in the future and the ego mind, of course, is always bouncing around back and forth between those two things. We got <clears throat> guilt back here in, in the past and the memory of guilt and all the things that we did wrong and if you only had done that differently and why am I still carrying that around with me? <laughs> you know, have I not forgiven myself by this time for whatever that seeming mistake was? And I underline the word seeming mistake because what we just read would imply that wasn't a mistake. That was really a part of the program that we bought into. So let me remind you, of, now, before going on to the next paragraph, of a line from the Gospels of when Jesus speaking, <clears throat> and he says, straight is the way and narrow is the gate, which leads into, do you know what it leads into anybody? Life, life. Now, by the way, one of the 
definitions of God that appears in the Course. Of course, it says God is love because every religion in the world says God is love. But at one point, it also says God is life. And life is in the mind and of the mind, right? It's in the mind and of the mind, right? So it's all about something that's going on on the level of mind. It's not about something actually which is necessarily happened in the level of form. And let's complete that quote from the Gospels. <clears throat> Broad is the way, wide is the path, which leads to, you know what leads to? Destruction. Many there are, they go therein. So we could think of that in terms of what happens with the egos, because all egos must eventually crumble and fall and fail for a very simple reason. <clears throat> They're not true. There's no truth in them. It, it, something has to be true in order for it to be eternal and everlasting. Love is true. God is true. There's a you that, that, that's true and always has been. And that you that's true is also a part of God. The Course is very, very clear. God's not part of us. We're a part of God. A way that you might think of that is if you can just imagine that, that your body is filled with trillions of cells and all those little cells, but all those cells are part of you, right? So they constitute you. And unless some cell decides to go crazy and run off and and create a disease or something like that that's like compared with the ego and then you're got something insane going on but if it's all working perfectly contentedly it's all working just fine then you're feeling good you're happy and things are, are working it's a simple analogy between these two different very universes actually there's this really interesting line in the course where it says that god is the god of the universe and of the universe of universes. What is the universe of universes? So one day I'm actually contemplating that uh, quote and I'm standing at the kitchen sink uh, cleaning some dishes and there's a little tiny round bug. I mean, so I don't even know what it was, but very, very round. And it's walking across the white windowsill over the top of the kitchen sink. And I look at this bug and I think, that's a universe. That's a universe in and of itself. It's a complete universe. It's a whole thing, which is, is living, right? So there are universes of universes of universes, which includes all the bugs and all the bacteria and all the planets and all the stars and all. <laughs> it's, but God is the God of, of everything. And of course, that, that clearly includes all it is that we cannot see. Our, our sight, it, although it's wonderful, and our ability to hear and all that is, is limited uh, to our senses. And of course, it gives us a lot, but it's, it's just a little bit <laughs> of all the, the possibility that's there, right? Let me read the next paragraph, and then we'll talk about this some more. And then I hope to just dialogue with you. I hope to go right into Q&A as quickly as we can. Okay. So this is paragraph four now. Time is a trick, a sleight of hand, a vast illusion in which figures come and go as if by magic. Yet there is a plan. So the plan is straight is the way and narrow is the gate. That's the plan. So God has laid out a plan for you and for me, which enables us to get home. A Course in Miracles is a very good map in terms of our understanding that plan. Actually, what it is, it's a very sophisticated psychology. It's no accident that the course was given to Helen Schuckman and to Bill Thetford, the professors of psychology, heads of the department at one of the most prestigious Ivy League universities in the United States, dedicated to psychology department at Columbia was known for its research, right? Helen was a research psychologist, working primarily, interesting enough, with children, right? So research means that they're, in, they're investigating. And interestingly enough, one of the things that Bill was working on pre-course 
was actually trying to understand more about what this ego thing was that Freud and Jung and the others had been talking about. Was this exactly, well, the Course is telling us exactly what it is. <laughs> At the same time that it does this, it then also tells us, oh, by the way, this doesn't exist. <laughs> it, has, it has no reality, it has zero reality. So, but we're, we're caught in the belief that it does have reality. And, and the way that we believe that, actually, if you pay attention to the workbook lesson for today, we believe it in good part because of this judgmental mind that we have that likes to find problems in the world. And that's what the ego is. The ego, in good part, it's a problem finder, right? Not a solution finder, but a problem finder. It loves to point out all the difficulties. So this is one of the challenges of the course, because one of the challenges of the course is it's really asking you to stop that. <laughs> just stop it. <laughs> just <laughs> stop doing all that fault finding and all that, you know, looking for problems. That's one thing. The ego, the ego looks for problems. And then it's a, this, this is a real problem. We've got a real problem here. And I'm not saying that there aren't problems in some sort of objective way and that they don't need attention. But God's solution to our, quote, problems and the ego solution are two very, very different things. Because one of the things the ego is going to do is going to get revenge and it's going to get back and we're going to make them pay and they're going to go to jail and they're going to die because of what they did, right? Uh, but that's not true. That's not true. God doesn't see it that way at all. In fact, there's this wonderful line in the Course where it says, God does not condemn. God did not condemn. There's no condemnation at all. In God's eyes, you are what you already are. You are already whole. You are already complete. You're 100%. And that's why we can say it. It's, you know, you're already healed. It's already fixed, right? But we're having, it's like we're having this dream. And the Course is very, very clear about it. It's actually a bad dream. I mean, what, what's, there's, there's nice pieces, but, it, you know, it's a, when I say it's a bad dream, it's, it's a dream of, oh, I've got relationship difficulties all over the place, and I've got money problems, and I've got health issues, and they're just all this stuff that I've got to carry around with me as I go through this world, and the body kind of heavy, and they'd really be kind of nice if I didn't have to be burdened with all this stuff. But all that stuff, of course, is a part of our, what we're learning. These are the, the lessons. You know. uh, the Course in Miracles in several cases says that this world is a classroom. And A Course of Love says it's a school. So it's, it's, it's a school, it's a classroom. It's, uh, it's more than one point. It says prison, prison. It's a reformatory. It's a mental hospital. That's what it is. It's a mental hospital. Uh, and we're, we're here to, uh, to get reformed and to, to learn what we can learn so that we can graduate and get out of here, not because you did anything really incredible or significant within the context of the world, but simply because you woke up and you saw the game and you saw the play and you saw the drama and you saw the soap opera that's going on and you've made this very, very simple decision. You said, I'm not playing. I, I'm not gonna play this game. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll watch it, I'll, I'll see. I mean, I, you can't help but see what's what's going on, but I, I just prefer not to get caught up in all that. It's the play that's on the stage, and it's always on the stage, and it's amazing that now we live in an age where we've become a, a global civilization, So that, and we've got 24-7 television and computers telling us what the world is. It's all about what the world is, which... Of course, there's this tremendous distraction because we think, isn't that awful? And this, this really needs to be fixed. And why do these politicians have to argue with each other like this? Well, because that's what politicians do. <laughs> that's what they've always done from as far back as there have been politicians. And, and of course, as you know, that this is an insane world because it is an insane world. It's, it's very simple. This is a world where there are wars, a lot of wars. And, I think on the positive end of this is that we are growing. We are, there is an expansion of consciousness going on. There are works like A Course in Miracles where it enables us to see more, A Course of Love, and others 
which are opening these doors to enable us to see the truth of what's really going on. Interesting enough, most of you probably know that I was for a very long time uh, a traditional minister, a Methodist minister. And uh, the churches are dying very, 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 very rapidly. I mean, it's, it's plummet. There was back in the 60s, like 70% of people in the United States had some identification with if some denomination somewhere. There was something, I'm a Methodist or Lutheran, or it's down to 45%. And it's going up much faster than that in terms of going Methodist church is going really, 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 really fast because they've split. They've been a big split recently over the LTBG2 thing. So some of them are breaking away and they're saying yes and they're saying no, but that division is called has caused also a tremendous regress within that particular sphere. But let's go back and let's finish this. Did I finish? I don't think I finished this. I want to finish this paragraph and talk about it a little bit more and then I'm going to stop and we can just talk. Let me start off with paragraph four. Time is a trick, a sleight of hand, a vast illusion, which figures come and go as like magic. There's a plan behind appearances that does not change. The script is written. When experience will come to your doubting has been set, will we but see the journey from the point at which it ended, looking back on it, imagine we make it once again, reviewing mentally what's gone by. So you may have these experiences from time to time. These uh, holy instances or revelatory experiences where you, you do have this aha and you do see. I suspect every one of us can kind of look back at our lives. And, we, and especially if you look at some of the, the unpleasant things that maybe that happened along the way or some of the tragic kind of stuff that happened along the way. And then you'll go, oh, now I, I understand exactly why that happened. That had to happen. That had to happen because if that hadn't happened, you know, if cause and effect, right? If, if A hadn't happened, B wouldn't have happened. And oh God, B was supposed to happen. I've really found in life that every time I've come to a detour, the detour was the right road. The detour was that's where I was supposed to be. That's what I was supposed to be doing. And if I'd going ahead would have been just been another uh, accident or another tragedy would eventually get me back on the right road. So look at it this way, and then I'm going to stop and we'll style it. So we got straight is the way, narrow is the gate, which leads into eternity, into heaven, into life. So all I got to do, I got all I got to do is pay attention to God's plan. Just do what God's plans laid out to do. It's all going to work out fine. But enter the ego. And now what we got, not want to do God. I'm not going to do that. I mean, that, that you know, that I, I'm a prodigal son. <laughs> or I'm a prodigal. I want to do my, I want to do it my way. The heck with this God's way stuff, right? You know, I want to make a lot of money. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a lot of money. I'm going to be famous. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get, well, bang, bang, crash, burn, fall, trim down. You know, eventually we have to wake up. And eventually we only have to wake up, we have to also get up. <laughs> I mean, uh, I begin to apply these principles in our lives. I begin to apply the principles, then I see that it's all absolutely perfect. This is the way it was supposed to be. And I'm going in the right. So there's, there's, there's of course, there's nothing happens by chance. Chance plays no part in God's universe. So even if you, quote, ego you, messes with the plan, the plan's still going to work it out, right? Now, you may go through some turmoil as a part of that, but keep in mind, you are learning something that this is going to be a part of your awakening, but it, that takes a good bit of maturity to be able to, to make the right decision. And thank goodness, Chapter 21, Section 2, I'm responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience. By the way, there's only two experiences, you, only two. It's either love or fear. You know? You know? I choose the feelings. I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And everything, everything 
everything that happens to me, I ask for. Now you're going to go, I did not ask for cancer or whatever it is, right? I did not ask for this divorce. I didn't ask for bankruptcy. But you got it. You got it. Here it is. It's in your lap. And somehow or another, this, this is your, you, you, you signed up for this. Deal. Don't you remember before you came to this life, you thought you'd, I said, I'm going to take divorce. I bet, what can I learn in a divorce class? I can learn a lot in a divorce class, I bet, right? Or maybe I'll take the, uh, oh, oh uh, the bankruptcy class. There's probably a lot you could learn in the bankruptcy class. <laughs> you, you can keep going down the list, right? But it, it's nothing that's not purposeful, and, but it's also a part of our choosing. So we want to learn how to make those, those choices, which are going to smooth out the process for it, and that's by being responsible. Now, I've been talking for 20 minutes or more without stop, so... Let's see what some well, yeah, this is this is very good. It really is good. I mean, when it really comes down to, you know, the script is written. Yeah. And how do we respond to what is playing in front of us? That's really the how, you know, that's how we free the mind, right? Forgiveness is my only function. Now I know that's just words, but like you say, the application of that while we're mentally reviewing that which has already gone by. Yeah. So does anybody have any questions or comments or um, or um, contributions? Or John, feel free to put up your hand electronically and I'll just take you off mute. Lisa, oh, Lisa. Okay, Lisa, you can go ahead and unmute yourself, Lisa. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so I have one question that really kind of came up because I was thinking about it yesterday. Um, and that is, is, is this God's plan? Because is he even aware of the dream that we're having? From what I recall, God doesn't know anything about this dream. So it's really not his plan. But it's more of the Holy Spirit's help along the way. Yeah. How would you discuss like between God, what's God's plan and how he is is or isn't aware of the dream that we're having right well a plan has been set out he doesn't have to be going over and over and over the plan your plan he knows that the solution is there he knows you're coming home that's the part that's significant he knows actually in God's sight you're or you've already done it you've already completed the plan but mm -hmm. at this time factor that gets in, in between. So God only knows you as the child of God that you are. That's mm -hmm. why that's why the love is already there. There's mm -hmm. no question about it, right? So uh, you, you, we're, you're already home, actually. <laughs> the story is over. It's done. That's <laughs> what you about. What, you, I don't need to know about the story. You know, it's very interesting. Let's look what happens in the prodigal son story. So without going over the whole thing, you know the story, the guy asks for his inheritance, goes off, spends it all in wanton living, whatever that is, go wherever you want to. And he uh, loses it all. He's down at the bottom of the pit, eating corn with the pigs, and he has a revelatory experience. Of course, says a lot about revelation, right? Has a revelatory experience. And revelatory experience, he says, I can go home. I can go home. I'll go home. And I'll say, Father, I've sinned against you before heaven. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. That's exactly what he does. And what happens when he goes home? The father doesn't say a word about where he went or what he did. Not a word. Nothing. You know, there's no past. There's no story. You know, there's no drama. There's, you know, all the father says, get a gold ring and put it on his finger. Get us some sandals and put them on his feet. Get a cloak and put it on him. Another, his status is being returned. He's coming, he's the self that he was. Nothing's lost. Him. He's, he's returned to, to who he was, right? Call in the musicians. Kill the fatted calf. <laughs> We're going to have a party. My son was lost. He's been found. He was dead. He's come back to life again, which is the same as saying, you were in, you had that. That was quite a dream you had. <laughs> 
you know, you went off into this other never never land. It's like Alice in Wonderland or any of the other mythological stories like that. What matters is just that we wake up. In fact, as I was listening to a death experience on uh, YouTube just recently, there's a lot of them there now, as you probably know, because it's, we now have this wonderful communication. And the guy was talking about a brief, brief, by that I mean it happened on, in a doctor's office, an operating room, and uh, he wasn't gone for very long. But he said there was, now, now don't take this the wrong way. <laughs> he said, it, it, would, it was as though this whole life wasn't at all. There was not, no regrets. There was, just, there was this whole new, it was like he'd go, it's like he had returned to where he'd always been. It's like he had been in a dream, and he saw that. Now, some of us may say, well, I, I like this life. I, I don't want to forget this life. I don't want to bemoan this life. Well, okay, so tell me, uh, how well do you remember your early childhood? How do you, you remember your childhood? Once upon a time in a land far, far away, there was a little girl named Stephanie, and she had certain kinds of experiences. But that's a, that's in a land far, far away. You know, you, you're already in heaven. <laughs> so the story we have now is just a story in that sense. And I hope that it's being played out for you fairly well or, or, very, or happily is what I'm saying. But then here are all these lessons we have to learn along. We have to learn these lessons along the way so that we can really wake up. All we have to do, essentially, is do exactly what Jesus did. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, when he goes into the, the desert experience, that's like we're, we're in the desert. The world is a desert. All right, we have all the, and the temptations. All these temptations come up. This devil thing comes along. By the way, there's no devil. And, there, and there's no devil in the, the original wilderness experience of Jesus either. What there is, is Jesus looking at the ego. I think he knew that he could be very powerful. I think he could knew, get people to bow down to him and worship him, things like that. Uh, he could, all the kingdoms of the world could be his. But he has the same response to each of the temptations, which is, uh, Get thee behind me, Satan. It's, it's written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Who you are, you are the Lord God yourself. And you don't want to be tempted. That's all a long answer to your question. But, uh, there, there it is. <laughs> I think, Lisa, just add to this a little bit. You know, we have to really understand what that means when it says mentally reviewing. That which has gone by. Right. Because every lifetime, really, it all happened at once. We've led thousands of lives, but they all happened at the same time. And now in this particular incarnation that we think we're in, it's a review. It's already happened. But we're getting to choose now to view it with the Holy Spirit rather than the ego. So, and right. it's, it's all about forgiveness. When we forgive, it collapses time. As the Course says, and Jesus can actually take things out of our script that we no longer need to learn. Because we've forgiven it, we don't need that lesson anymore. But if we don't get it done in this lifetime, we get to review another lifetime where we continue on our forgiveness process. But that lifetime could be in the future or it could be in the past because it's already over. As, as we were just saying earlier, we're all safe at home. We've never left God. And I personally, my mind, not me, but my mind has had that experience of being at home. And trust me, you have no recollection of this dream whatsoever when you're at home, because you really never, you, you seriously have not left your home in God. This is a complete illusion, a delusion of consciousness. And God loves you completely. You're innocent. Nothing to worry about. Only thing we really have to do here is it's a simple statement, but takes us a long time to get this is to forgive what never happened. Mm. We have to own our false projections, in other words. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. 
go on. That's, that's important what uh, Lloyd just said about it. it forgive what never happened. <laughs> right. It never happened. All right. Yeah. Unless, unless you think it did, unless you want to make an issue out of it, unless you, you, you say, well, that, no, that, that thing did happen. And, and I got hurt by that. And you're responsible for it. <laughs> In which case, we're digging a hole for ourselves. Yeah. Would, you react, would you react your figures in a dream? You knew you were dreaming, right? right. You know right. what? Uh, okay, are we ready for the next? Sure. Uh, okay, Elia, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes, you're talking about the LGBT community, and I live in Florida where the trans women and children are being vilified by the governor. And I used to, I, I transitioned at the age of 61 pre Course in Miracles. And since the Course in Miracles, I no longer. I no longer see myself as a trans woman. I see myself as just spirit. Yeah. But um, of course, I still have I still have a little edginess towards politicians in the, in that respect. Sure. So uh, just, how do you get rid of that? God, I keep forgiving it, and I keep forgiving it, and I keep forgiving it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's, that's still the same process. <laughs> you, want to, you want to transcend that. <laughs> <laughs> you, got to, you got to take it to a higher level. You know, there's always going to be, and there always have been, uh, cultural problems. You know, that's that's how we get in difficulties in this world. You know, one culture is a different from another culture, and then won't buy that culture, won't accept that culture. And then that gets us into a lot of trouble. And we have to see each other as, as we really are, as you said, as spirit, as, as the divine children that we really are. That's all, that's, that's all that matters, right? You're, none of us are actually, in the long run, bodies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we leave all that behind, too. Yeah? Oh, I understand. Tammy? Okay, go ahead and unmute yourself, Tammy. Hi. Um, I just want to ask about your forgiveness process because the ego, every time I think I've got it down, every single time, the ego is telling me, you're doing it wrong. You're adding time. What if you're just adding time? No matter how much I, I try, even now, I'm pretty sure I know how, but the ego's like, no, you don't. Don't speak about this. So I'm speaking about it. I'm asking. I figure I'll just keep firing at it until it. I actually believe that I know how to forgive. Thank well, you. I think you just answered your own question. Then. <laughs> <laughs> and there are two of me, of course, right? The ego and... Yeah, I'm not going to give you some sort of magical answer. The you've already got it right there. You said it yourself. You know. So don't be surprised. We shouldn't be surprised if more and more opportunities for forgiveness uh, keep coming up for us. Every once in a while, you think, well, I kind of got this all down, you know? And then you make an incredible judgment about something. You know, I mean, if, if you're nothing else, just in your own mind, you, you do it, right? And you think, well, I, you, I thought I was beyond that, but <laughs> we're all here because we small, to do. Oh, sorry. There's a delay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just have a, small, I have a small example of what happened. Um, okay. When I, I got yelled at, yeah. and I... I honestly didn't do anything, but the person yelled at me and I knew that she was, it wasn't her, but yet I still felt, I guess I still felt murderous thoughts. I did not obviously act on them, No. but on the surface, I didn't say anything until later. And I just said, you know, it's not okay to treat me like that, but I, I did it in kindness. Okay. So I don't know if I should have said anything or not, or I should have just forgave i don't know well the question is what does it take to let it go mm. letting go is just something that happened in mind you might need to ask that or you don't have to really nothing really needs to be done to let it go except to realize that yeah, you don't need that and that's gonna 
pollute your system rather than help to heal your system. And uh, so I wouldn't want to hold on to it. Reverend Jerry? Thanks, Tammy. Oh, Reverend Jerry, yes, go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, John, and hi, hi everybody. Um, I, I have a question concerning the, uh, <clears throat> the idea that no one is ultimately free until we're all free. Yeah. Uh, something to the effect uh, everyone's still in slavery until the last slave uh, is set free. Could you comment on that since there's only one, and yet it seems that we're dependent on that last straggler? <laughs> well, let's say, is Jesus free? Jerry, I'm asking this question. Uh huh. Is Jesus free? Um, I, I would have to say yes. Yes, of course. Well, <laughs> Guess what, Jesus? Buried in Grant's tomb. Guess yes. what, Jesus, Jerry? <laughs> You're already free too. And so, ah. yeah. Okay, but we have to be able to see that. We have to be able to see it, even though other people will not be able to see it for themselves. We have to see it to see it for ourselves. I'd like to share before I close a uh, poem I wrote with you. Uh, it's a, it's about seeing what Jesus saw and doing what he did in order to really be really liberated because it's the mind that's liberated right in a good part of what we're doing with this is this passage we're looking at is saying we are recognize that it's already happened so if it's already happened it doesn't mean it's going to happen someday keep in mind we are working outside of time heaven is not in time time is where the story is time is where the drama is time is where the soap opera is. so as a, the, the more i'm caught in time the more it seems that that is real All right so what i, I want to do is to understand what's really necessary is to transcend time altogether and in that process recognize as we, the whole piece is saying as lloyd was just saying this, it's done that what you're saying is already done too. Hmm? The story's over. And you're free in your home and you're liberated, and so is everyone. And thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Simple enough. Just uh -huh. to get in here to show you that the time is already over. Uh, I can only go by my own personal experiences, my mind's personal experience is in the last four years, Jesus has worked with me, showing me uh, literally hundreds of future events. And then they happen just the way that he shows me. It could happen the next day, it could be even two weeks from now. But then I get this, this thought in my mind and Jesus says to me, I'm not showing you a future event. Mm. I'm showing you a past event. This world was over long ago. And one of those one of those uh, visions that I got was a motorcycle accident that I was in, and I saw that accident uh, a day before it even happened, hmm. and it happened exactly like I was shown. So that's just sort of that's been my my experience, and I'm sure we we've all had those uh, sort of days of view. Days of view is just uh, showing you, yes, you've been here before, <laughs> you've seen right. it, yeah. What you really want to do is kind of when that kind of thing that Lloyd's talking about happens, you really want to be kind of hold that, kind of just let that be for you to see the, the depth of the reality of that. Yeah. Cheryl? Yep, go ahead, Cheryl. And un you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. Um, John, you said something earlier that really hit home with me. And then Lloyd's story kind of followed up with that. Um, to see the devil is to look at your ego. 
I had an experience at the age of 13 where this bright light appeared to me in the bedroom, but it was in the shape of a devil. And I remember just staring at this pointed tail of the devil. And this light started to tell me what was gonna happen in my future. And eventually that ended and, um, but it always stayed with me. And as my life unfolded, these things started coming up and actually happening. And it just so happens the things that I was being told at that time were not nice things. It wasn't showing me happy times in my future. It was showing me um, sad times, bad times. And all my life I've wondered since this, I, I wasn't afraid during any of it, but I thought if this is an angel or something from God, why would I be looking at it like the devil? And then you said to see the devil is to see the ego. And now I realize it was my ego that was creating these events. Very good. And that already happened. Yeah. Wow. What what we want to do with the ego, and I had I had a a dream, I, and I wrote about it in the most recent issue of Miracles Magazine, not recently, a long time ago, but it was very very vivid, of uh, encountering the devil, <laughs> and I won't tell you the whole dream. I'll just tell you how it ended. The devil, I, I was asked if I wanted to meet the devil himself, <laughs> and I said I would like to, and they took me into this side room and. The devil himself was a little boy sitting in an aluminum lawn chair with his arms kind of draped royally over the side of the, the chair and his head bent down on his chest as though he was pouting about something. And I, I went over and knelt down beside him and put my arms around him and I said, I love you, I love you. And he started screaming and shaking and saying, no, no, you can't say that, and disappear. Wow. It's incredible. So right, it's the ego. You're looking at the ego. Yeah. But the ego disappears. All you got to do is love it. So yeah. you're not real. And I'll, to prove it, I'm not going to torture you. I'm not going to uh, kill you. I'm going to love you. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Thank you for the insight. Sure. Oh. David, you want to chime in? Oh, it's good to see David with it. If you want, you don't have to. <laughs> I just want to say, you know, you're talking there, uh, Cheryl, you shared an experience about you were given some scenarios that were going to play out in your life. And so you were given some uh, insight as to the script, you know, the, the script that we all write with the ego before we come here. The script is written and we wrote the script with the ego. And it's important to understand the motivation of this script. The motivation of the script is to prove that I'm an innocent victim of a victimizing world. And so we will continue, you know, the cycle of birth and death and of reviewing all these timelines until we learn to turn the tables on the ego by forgiving the script <clears throat> instead of utilizing the script to prove to myself that I'm an innocent victim of a victimizing world I begin to work with the Holy Spirit ask him to reinterpret what I'm seeing <clears throat> into you know his evaluation rather than my evaluation with the ego and so I want I just wanted to mention that because you know, that's, that's important to understand the motivation of the ego script so that we're equipped to turn the tables on the ego. Yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you. You have, to, you have to remember too, as the Course says, these eyes don't see anything. They were made not to see 
only the mind actually sees. And John, I, I think, John, maybe you could read paragraph one in lesson 158. I think that would be good to, to go over that. If you like, sure. Um, what has been given you, the knowledge that you are mind, in mind, and purely mind, sinless forever, wholly unafraid, because you were created out of love. Nor have you left your source, remaining as you were created. This was given you as knowledge, which you cannot lose. It was given as well to every living, living thing, for by that knowledge only does it live. That's, yeah, that's really very, very important. Thanks, Lloyd. Okay, we got three three hands up here. Sandy Peterson, go ahead and unmute yourself. Oh. Okay, Sandy, I can't. I can hear you. I'm going to go ahead and ask you to unmute yourself again. Yeah, sorry, I just didn't get there fast enough. Okay. Uh, first of all, John. Um, thanks for being with us today, John Monday. Uh, I get your emails Sunday with Monday, and I oh, read them every Sunday. Um, I wanted to comment on something that Lloyd said that has struck me, and it, you know, I just feel like I want to just say a little bit more about it. You were talking about how we're in multiple lifetimes, that they're all happening simultaneously, but what's different about this one? And this is what really struck me is that we are choosing to live it with or through the Holy Spirit, joined with the Holy Spirit. And that really struck me. I had never really thought about it that way before. And, you know, if there's anything else that anyone else wants to say about that, I'd love to hear it. Yeah. Well, I think that, that we are definitely as a moving in terms of a uh, opening of our consciousness in a deeper way than ever, which is not so confined and delimits us. So we're seeing, we're seeing the story, we're seeing the script, and, but we're also recognizing it more than ever before that we could step out of it. I, I could step out of this. I do not have to keep repeating this story over and over again, right? I don't need to come back here anymore. I don't know about any of the rest of you, but, uh, I the bodies are heavy. It takes a lot of work to work with these bodies. They require a lot of maintenance, and uh, <laughs> I just assume I don't want to do high school again. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm with you, John. <laughs> Me too. Well, it's really, yeah, right. it's really a matter of motivation, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is a clear motivation. This, you know, if this is a dream, I, I'd really like to have. A, a happy dream now not not a dream that's um got so many chapters and sad sections and dramas in it yeah it's like it's a survival of the fittest when we, you know from the moment we wake up to the time we lay down at night it's all about survival yeah it's just a lot of it the world is for a lot of people that's all that there is yeah. i mean it's, it's just about survival you know, it's just not, not even having the opportunity to pray, to, to read, to study, to grow, to, you know, yeah. well, it's to the see world, what we can see. It's the world that's made to keep us mindless. There you go. It's one, a, a couple of videos that Lloyd and I watched. I mean, we might must have watched them like up to 10 times, which, you know, absolutely brilliant. Uh, the Two Dreams by Ken Wapnick. Mm -hmm. It's a two-part YouTube, you know, two-part YouTube channels, and it was just absolutely beautiful and understanding, you know, that the mm -hmm. world that we're the world is the world that's made to keep us mindless. Yeah. And of course, we got you know, there's the secret dream and the world's dream. So very right. important to understand what they are, what their purpose is, and how to release ourselves from them, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and one other point that really is important when you start, you know, to really get into the Course of Miracles, you know, it talks about you know what is the number one um, thing that a Course of Miracles teacher has to learn, and that's <laughs> trust. That's the number one thing. 
And that, for me, I, I can only speak for myself, that came in increments. And I found that the Holy Spirit actually earned my trust. It wasn't the other way around until I actually started to trust 100%. And that's truly when my journey changed because believe it or not, you get guidance. No, it's not in the world. It's in your mind that you get the guidance. But some amazing things happen when you trust 100%. It changes the, you know, changes the outcome of your dream completely. Um, and it just, you walk around a lot of times with a big smile on your face. <laughs> and it almost happens on a daily basis once you get to that point. That's why forgiveness is so important and, and trust is so important. Right. Okay. Uh, Dove Fishman. Speaking of trust. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. I was going to uh, share uh, something from Ken Wapnick, to tell you the truth. Uh, that might answer some, some of the questions. Uh, he says, our habitual response should be, what can I learn from this? Mm -hmm. Rather than, why is this happening to me? Uh, if you see things happening to you, uh, that, that puts you out of fact. And the whole course is to recognize that we're the dreamer of the dream. Uh, and we're listening to a teacher that believes in separation and uh, sees us as not the son of God. Obviously, if you're a body and, and you're born, you live and you die, uh, how could you be the son of God? So uh, figures that uh, you're guilty. And, and of course, we don't want to see ourselves as guilty, but we see others as guilty and 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 that's what makes the world up is, is the idea that I'm looking at this giant movie screen and uh, whether you talk about the politicians or whatever's going on out there, uh, you think that things are either, you know, not for me, that they're against me. I, I think uh, somebody up here said, uh, doesn't the ego want us to die? Uh how, how can we love that which is not real? The Course reminds us the ego wants us dead. Well, if I am believing in my thoughts, and, 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 that's, and that's, a, that's a belief system, you know, the ego wants me dead. The whole idea of the Course is to, is to let go of the belief system. It's the belief system that's killing us. And for, of course, I use the word belief has three letters in the middle. It's, it's a lie. So, what we're really here for is to remember the truth exactly as john said and as lloyd said we're already home we're home dreaming that we're in exile dreaming that we're in exile but we but we do believe the dream because we do identify ourselves with being a body and let's face it bodies are different they're separate from other bodies they have separate interests and the Course says, listen, once you realize that we all share the same interests, then you're already a miracle worker. You, you, you're a teacher of A Course of Miracles. And sharing the same interests is really sharing the same purpose. And it really just came to me today exactly what John said. Our purpose is to remember that we're at home. <laughs> yeah. That 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 what you think is true is not true. But what you think, and of course, that's thinking, thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're talking about trust. Uh, Dev was the uh, the guy in uh, Boston who had these cards. It says trust will settle every problem right now, and we uh, we ended up getting about thirty of them. <laughs> Find them all over the place. Yeah, we still got them. And we still got them. We had them all over the place in every one of our vehicles uh, in each room. It just keeps us keeps us tuned up, and we mm. thank Dub for that those cards every day. <laughs> oh, today I found it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, th th these are the uh, th these are the birthday uh, lessons. <laughs> oh, great! Yeah, which, which which I didn't have the last time I was here. Yeah. 
I got a little insight from the Holy Spirit um, not too long ago, talking about the difference between level one and level two, and of course in miracles. And what was my my mind was shown was that level two statements, for example, in a course in miracles, which says, I'm just going to use this example because this is what was given to my mind. It says, all things are lessons God would have me learn. Well, that is a two level statement. That's a level two statement because in heaven, there are no lessons and there is no conflict. So I just wanted to share that. You know, the different, and, and the other, the other uh, thing that I was shown was that level two statements are what we use to make the truth more palatable as we're climbing up the ladder. Hmm. You know, at the top of the right. level, of course, being level one being that God is and nothing else is, but we use level two statements while we're climbing up the ladder. Now, John, I was just asking you a question. Um, for myself, I consider the Course in Miracles a completely pure non-dualistic teaching. Some a lot of people don't agree with that, and it doesn't really matter. But how do you feel about that? Well, that's that. I mean, it is a completely non-dualistic teaching. It's pretty plain. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Non-dualism is level one, <laughs> yes. and that's where we. That's where we already are, is what the Course is saying. Right. We're not playing around on level two. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, and pure non-dual means that God is outside of time and space and knows not of consciousness. Right. That's what pure non-dual means. Part of the, the dual is past future. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So if I could just get to now and and you can get to now every now and then you get now you know it's like you can just relax a little bit i was watching uh, eckhart tolle on youtube the other day somebody asked him the question what did you think is your greatest accomplishment and he paused for a moment as he does and he says i've learned how to stop my mind <laughs> yeah. right in other words you learn how to stop you know going back <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> yeah david that's okay go ahead yeah no no the other david oh okay <laughs> you're a dove you're a dove i need to i i do need to leave now thank thank you all good seeing you bro okay, thanks for dropping yeah. it dub. david go ahead and unmute yourself okay here we go okay uh yeah, I uh, good to see you again, John. I haven't seen you in about uh, now 10, 11 years. I think you're when you came to Torrington, Connecticut, to the Unity Church. It was mm -hmm. a long time ago. But anyway, uh, uh, you know, we we talk a lot about you know politics and the politicians and the government and the deep state and all this stuff. And you know, I've had a lot of conversations about that because we're going through some really well. We appear to be going through some amazing times right now. Uh, but the way I see it, the way I'm seeing it more and more is that I'm really all I am seeing is my own dream projected outward. Yeah. Yeah. And that as I wake up little by little, uh, it keeps changing and the judgment uh, kind of fades little by little. And it's just my judgments and my, uh, you know, my own dream, like, you know, what you said earlier about uh you know, the world was over long ago, uh, like it says in the Course, uh, because that, you know, like Jesus says, that tiny mad idea that that occurred so long ago that it's you know, basically out of memory it's so long ago. And, but now all I'm doing is reliving or, or redreaming that separation over and over and over again. So it's really gone, but I'm just dreaming as if it still exists. Right. And and uh, and that goes for everything that I'm seeing occurring in the world now. I mean, I'm just seeing, you know, not only you know my own projection of my own ego and then the collective ego, and uh, eventually that won't exist anymore once we, you know, once I wake up, once we all wake up. That's just uh, 
That's about all I have to say about that. <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> well said. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, we have to realize what keeps us locked in the dream. Mm. Judgment. Making it real. Yeah. It's that simple. <laughs> yeah, simple. You know, and, and the other thing is that we can't get out of here alone. We can't do it on our own. You know, if, if you're trusting in your own strength, you have every reason to be fearful, anxious, and afraid. We can't do it without the Holy Spirit the, or AKA the right mind. So it's like, I know in my own journey, it's like I, I had to practice and learn how to make room for the Holy Spirit's interpretation. You have to practice that. You know, that's not something that comes naturally. It's something that we have to practice, like forgiveness. We have to practice it. Right. And you have to want it. And, and like Lloyd always says, it's a process, you know, when it happens in increments. It's a repetition. That's why yeah. you know, repetition is not just needed it's like it's mandatory i mean i don't know about you john but every time for years when i read the course i would swear that certain pages weren't there when i read it the time before oh sure oh gosh <laughs> that, uh, that <laughs> still happens to me in, uh, yeah, for all these years <laughs> right uh, okay we have another question adam go ahead and unmute yourself Hi, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, good. Hi. Um, long time reader, first time caller. <laughs> um, I, uh, I was really struck and it's still resonating with me now, uh, John, when you uh, were talking about there being no devil that uh, that passage in the Bible was about Jesus fighting with his ego. Um, that's brilliant. Could you... Um, would you mind expanding on that a little bit, please? I'll take my answer off the air. No, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you if you just think for a moment about what the temptations are that, that are placed in front of him, they're all ego temptations that he has there, you know. And he just longs how to say no to them. It's it's that simple, you know. The first one is to turn stone into bread. I mean, he says, you know, it's it's not my time. This is something that's physical. That's magic to do that. Uh, that's not a miracle. The miracles, I'm I'm not hungry. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a body, you know. Uh, and the devil takes him to a high mountain and he says, Here, bow down and worship me and all these kingdoms of the world, they'll be yours. Well, that's the great temptation that all dictators and the tyrants have all fallen for. Is so they're gonna make the whole world theirs, you know. And they wound up making a mess of things for everybody and including themselves. <laughs> you know, they wind up killing themselves in the end or something like that, or being assassinated or something. That's just insanity. But you know, it's very clear. I'm not gonna go that way. Yeah. Not even in a little way. By a little way is uh some minister friend of mine was telling me about troubles he was having at his church because there was a former former navy captain who uh, retired who was now running the church and he wasn't <laughs> he just took he took power where he could get power if you see what i'm saying <laughs> there's a great line of the course says power fame money physical pleasures to whom do these things belong <laughs> well they all belong to the ego don't they <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, anybody else have something? Keith Cavanaugh, I see you very active there on the chat. Would you like to come in and have a little chat? Uh, only if you feel like it now, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead if you want to unmute yourself. And if not, we'll just take, we'll just carry on here. There we go. I'll, I'll let you uh, go ahead, Stephanie. Thanks very much for the opportunity. But I'm on a bus at the moment, and I'm coming in and out of the signal. Awesome. Okay, great. Really nice to have you here, Keith. We yeah, love great you. to see you. We love you. Super, guys. Thanks a million. Okay. Christine, go ahead and unmute yourself. 
something I really appreciate about the course is no matter how long I keep going in it, the answers are just always the same. Like you never have to get better at the course. It's not like gymnastics where I have to be able to do a quadruple flip in the air. It's just really simple. I'm doing the same thing on day one that I'm doing 20 years in that I'll be doing 45 years in. It's always the same thing. It's still always in the mind. I can put the book down and go do my own life or get caught up in ego nonsense for an hour or a year or a decade. And then I come back and it's the same exact thing. There's no, you know, it's not evolving where I have to, where I missed out on anything. You just keep going every minute that you remember to. And that's it. It's very simple. The ego is very complicated and keeps throwing out things. And I find myself saying, oh no, how do I pray better? How do I do this better? And then I go lay down. I'm like, just stop, just take a nap and <laughs> take a nap and come back and do the same thing you did the first time you picked up the book over again. I love it. Right. Yeah. Very good. It's so amazingly simple. You can't believe it can be that simple, but it really, really is. You've got to get it down to a simplest level and then it becomes clear. You think it's something really complex and convoluted. It's not. Not at all. Right. That's why the course talks about the chapter one section, chapter two, section two. Now, chapter one, section two is on time, revelation, and miracles. And a big emphasis there is on revelation. And this is what the transcendentalist philosophers were talking about. It's not a matter of collecting evidence. It's about knowing, knowing and, and, and seeing, which is a, a mystical experience, really. It's the aha again, the intuition, the insight that's necessary for me to understand this. Okay, let's carry on here. Two persistence got, raise okay, hands. Christine, uh, lower Christine's hand. Angela, go ahead and unmute yourself, Angela. Oh, thank you for having me again today. Um, I just want to, I don't have a whole lot to say. Can you hear me okay, Stephanie? Yes. Great. Uh, Great. I just want to express that I do have your book, John, yeah, yeah. and um, I'm holding it. And I did get it in 2000, I think about 2013. And um, it was one of the first ones that I read to help me along with the course. Okay. And you do a beautiful job of uh, breaking it down. Okay. Uh, so I just want to express that too. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I have I have writing it. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, I have a feeling that your book would be very good for all levels if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. like as a beginner, maybe whatever, or not that there's any levels in reality, yeah. but yeah, I just have that feeling about your book. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to read it again, actually. I'm just by, you know, maybe I'm supposed to read this again because it's been a while since I read it and I mm -hmm. will, I'm going to keep it in my keepsake. I like doing that on some of these books. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. I, I like to share, but, I, but, Sometimes there's things that we want to keep safe because there's so much to take in. Okay. Thank you. Somebody else had their hand up. Okay. Did anybody else have their hand up? Okay, so, you know, um, we can just- Did I see Sarah on here earlier? Sarah? Yeah, it'd be nice to say hi. I don't see her now. Okay. Uh, there's Elia. Okay, Elia, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes, John. I my husband passed away seven years ago, and ever since he's passed away, he leaves messages on my bed, which is a plush blanket. These hearts and infinity symbols and one the symbols moves pictures around, moves vases of flowers around, lights my candles, um, all these things every day, almost every day since he's passed. I believe we were, I believe he was enlightened when he passed. Mm. And um, so I, I don't know if I'm, if I'm joining with the Holy Spirit or joining with him or what, so I'm not sure exactly how that works. I'm not either, I didn't, especially in that that instance, but I'm glad that you're having that experience. 
It's a wonderful experience. That's very comforting and loving thing to be experiencing. Be grateful. I am. And yeah, I'm sure you are. Um, Elia, somebody just in the chat, Anna said, there's no difference between your husband and the Holy Spirit. That's true. Mm. That's true. And, you know, because we're on an individual curriculum, we have no idea, you know, what shows up for, you know, in different aspects of the journey. Everybody is, gets different gifts given to them or whatever. Yeah, and the Holy Spirit knows what symbols to use yeah. to for you. Like we, he knows what you will recognize. And that's been a big part of my journey is that uh, Jesus uses the symbols for, with me a lot to talk to me because he knows, you know, what I will understand about that particular symbol. And it's always right on the money. <clears throat> now, I do hear a voice occasionally now that started a couple of years ago. But uh, he still uses mostly symbols with me. Sandy, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. Um, five minutes ago, someone held up a copy of your book. John, can we get the title of that book? Uh, it's called um, Living a Course in Miracles. There, sir. I'll hold it back up again. Living a Course in Miracles. It's in Thank audio you. and on Kindle as well. And we'll put it up uh, when we when we share the this video later today. We'll put it up there. We'll put it up okay. a bronze link. Very good. Yeah. Something else, uh, if I could, as long as you're doing informational stuff. Yes. Uh, I publish a magazine called Miracles. I've been doing so for 36 years. And uh, we have a deal. The deal is free. <laughs> That's a good uh, if you go to our website which is miraclesmagazine.org just miraclesmagazine.org okay. uh, you get a free one-year subscription by just signing up for it and if you want also on uh one of you mentioned it, on sunday every sunday morning i send out a little 750 word epistle thing uh, inspirational you get that uh too but there's no charge at the end of a year you renew or you don't renew. It's that simple. Uh, <laughs> fantastic. Miraclesmagazine.org. That's it. Okay, fantastic. I just shared that in the chat. Oh, good. That's a good idea. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, Sandy, you already asked, correct? You, you, Yes, okay. Okay, so John, how would you like to proceed from here? Do we want to start like wrapping it up a little bit or do you want to take some more questions or how do you feel? I'm I'm fine. Uh, we can begin to wrap it up if you like, uh, whatever that means. Well, <laughs> you know, like, I just thought that might be you know a good idea. It's for, we've been speaking now for it's coming up now to an hour and a half. Right. I just thought this might be a good time to kind of wind it down. Well, we do have another hand up here. Okay, so after Laura, I'll do a little summary and then uh, turn it back to you. Okay. Okay. Laura, go ahead and unmute yourself. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, thank you so much for what, what everybody has talked about. I It keeps coming to mind that I hear about the happy dream and it makes me feel as though my goal is to somehow achieve something in this world but it's experiencing the world in a completely different way. And, and as though if I work really, really hard, that's possible. <laughs> and it kind of uh, stymies me sometimes, or I feel like I'm being, um, I'm achieved, I'm struggling toward the wrong goal. And I wondered what you had to say about that. Well, if I understood you correctly, I don't think it's a matter of struggling. So much as it really is a matter of letting go to it and being receptive and, and, and hearing this, hearing what the Course has to say, because it's really, really very clear. Um, the things to get out of its way and kind of let God run over you. By that I mean, kind of let the Holy Spirit run over you. Um, recognize what you already have as true. Um, 
remembering. It's about really about remembering. Remembering that this is not a real world. Remembering that you are home already, which then should enable us to live in this world more like a happy dream. By that I mean with a certain level of contentment and um, inability to be easily pulled off into some sort of ego exaggeration as some sort of about what we think the world is. One of my very, very favorite lessons is uh, 268, let all things be exactly as they are. Let's just let it be exactly, it's all right. Everything is okay. It's all right. God's in charge, always has been. You know, trust the system. There's nothing you need to fix except for the changing the way we see. And that's, that's everything right there. Projection makes perception. <laughs> Very simple. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll just share one little perk uh, that I got this morning, just to show you how when you really get in touch with spirit, how things can happen in your life. As you all know, I drive a school bus, and this morning I, I ran a little bit late. Uh, and I was driving up the highway, and I'm thinking, Jesus, I'm going to be 15 minutes late to pick up my first client. And I hear this silent voice says to me you're going to be just fine you're not going to be late and i'm thinking wow that's great news but i don't know how that can happen <laughs> <laughs> and uh, two minutes later i get a call from my office um uh, this lady helen's my manager she says to me lloyd you don't have to uh, worry about your first pickup they just canceled they're not going to be there today and that made up the 15 minutes so i wasn't late <laughs> <laughs> Those are the no. get along the way. Yeah. Holy well, Spirit reminded him that, you know, he's in charge of time and yeah, space. Exactly. <laughs> Good. Can I share with you all a, a poem that I wrote recently? Absolutely. I have to get it, but it's right here. Oops. And all the doves and birds are here. <clears throat> Maybe we could use this as a kind of a benediction. Okay. To see what Jesus saw is to do what Jesus did, to let the Christ be fully known and never hid. To see what Jesus saw is to be who Jesus is. To give our minds to him is to have the self same mind as his. To give our minds to him is to become the Christ as well. To become the Christ as well is to be free of the ego's hell. To see what Jesus saw is to follow the same self path he trod. To follow the same self path is to find our way to God. To know what Jesus knows is to be oneself right now. To commit oneself to God is to make a solemn vow. To follow God's voice this moment and forever is to join with kindred souls in a beatific great endeavor. Amen. Wow, Amen. that's beautiful, John. That, that's mm -hmm. beautiful. What a beautiful way to to close here today. So uh, I'm just going to thank you, John, so much for you yeah. know, time and your, your, your beautiful thoughts of God and sharing them with us today. And I'm just going to take everybody off mute. I'm going to give everybody now the power to take yourselves off mute. And let's thank John for showing up here today. And let's extend some love now back to him. Just take yourselves off mute. So thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Have a good night. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Nice being with you. Don't ever retire.
Somebody asked me if I was going to retire. And I said, going no, home together. Great, too much fun. Thanks, guys. We love you. We love you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.